Hello friends, welcome to my channel HVACR Engineers. Be professionals. Welcome friends. This video, we're going to understand all about superheat. What is superheat? Principles of superheat? Why, the correct superheat is important. Importance of superheat? Happening in which part of system? How to measure the superheat? Possible cause for high superheat? Possible cause for low superheat? Diagnosis use superheat. How to maintain proper superheat? Important points to take note. Before, go to superheat, we understand the pH chart first, and, where the superheat happens. Here, you can easily understand, the curve green, shows the saturated liquid line. Blue curve shows, the saturated vapor line. The saturated liquid line, and, saturated vapor line, meet the point is called, critical point. The liquid at evaporator, completely changed to vapor, before enter to compressor, that added heat is, called superheat. What is, superheat? Superheat, is an indication of, the amount of extra heat, or, superheating, in simple term, it's the temperature, above the saturation temperature, of the vapor in the system. Superheat occurs, when that, vapor is heated above, its boiling point. Superheat tell us, what's going on? In an evaporator, high superheat equals thirsty evaporator, which means, little refrigerant in the system. Low superheat equals flooded evaporator, which means, excessive refrigerant. Principles of superheat? Superheat is, sensible heat transfer, that provides very little useful cooling. This occurs because, there is no change of state, only change of temperature. Refrigerants, should never leave the evaporator coil, at saturation temperature, because, liquids are still present. Latent heat transfer, gives us our greatest energy transfer, and, results in massive cooling capacity. Superheating is done by the load. If the load is low, the superheat will be low. If the load is high, the superheat will be high. Importance of superheat? In a refrigeration, and air conditioning system, superheat is necessary, to assure the maximum refrigerating effect, from the refrigerant, and to assure, there is no liquid refrigerant, enters to the compressor, we use the superheat, and, subcooling levels of an air conditioning system, as a measure of the system's, operating conditions. Why, correct superheat is, so important. Compressor lifespan increases, if the superheat, is not set right, and the compressor is flooding, or, starving excessively, then expect as little as, a year, or two before failure. The compressor needs, correct amount of returning refrigerant, to keep its motor windings, at the correct temperature, and, most importantly, its oil at an optimum. How to determine, or, measure the superheat, steps as below. 1. Take the low side, pressure reading from your gauges. 2. Then take the temperature, of the suction line as close to the condensing section, as possible away, at least 6 inches from compressor. 3. Use PT chart, to find the corresponding saturation temperature, for the measured suction pressure. 4. Subtract the converted temperature, from the pipe surface temperature, and, that's called the superheat. So, suction line temperature, minus, saturation temperature equals superheat. Here, are the sum of the examples, for calculating superheat, for your reference. Next topic is, high superheat. Excessive, or high superheat, is an indication of insufficient refrigerant, in the evaporator coil. This could means that, not enough refrigerant is entering the coil, or this could also, indicate an excessive heat load, on the evaporator. Possible causes of high superheat. 1. Low refrigerant charge. 2. Liquid line restriction. 3. Evaporator airflow too high. 4. Excessive load. 5. Metering device not feeding correctly. 6. Incorrect metering device. Possible causes of low superheat 1. Low superheat indicates an excess of liquid refrigerant in the evaporator coil. 2. Evaporator airflow too low. 4. In these cases, it is likely that liquid refrigerant present in the suction line 
and may possibly enter the compressor, causing compressor failure. Possible diagnosis using superheat, if superheat is high, and subcooling is low, charge must be adjusted. System is undercharged. If superheat is low, and subcooling is high, charge must be adjusted. System is overcharged. If superheat is high, and subcooling is high, could have blockage in coil, orifice, or line set. If superheat is low, and subcooling is low, orifice could be too big, there is no orifice in the unit. Or, the orifice is stuck, and refrigerant is bypassing it. How to maintain proper superheat. Expansion valves quality is very important to ensure and stable operation. Expansion valve duty must be checked for the correct size and liquid flood back testing can be carried out under extreme operating condition to keep minimum superheat setting 6 to 8k for TXV and 4 to 6k for AF properly install expansion device the expansion valve must be installed in the liquid line ahead of the evaporator with its bulb fastened to the suction line as close to the evaporator as possible important points to take note for superheat the amount of refrigerant quantity is related to subcooling. The performance of the system is related to suction gas superheat. Do not adjust charge based on superheat on systems with thermal expansion valves. DXVs control the superheat. You can, however, check the superheat to see if the DXV is working properly. It is preferred to set superheat in a cooling cycle when the indoor return air temperature is just above set point. For example 23 degrees Celsius plus, or minus a couple of degrees, the target superheat, temperature is generally 3 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius, 4 degrees Celsius to 6 degrees Celsius for electronic expansion valves, superheat occurs, in the evaporator to protect the compressor, and, subcooling occurs in the condenser, to protect the expansion device, superheat is critical in HVAC, because, it ensures the liquid refrigerant is, boiled off before it leaves the evaporator, and, heads to the compressor. Even small amounts of liquid, can cause, detrimental damage to the compressor, in an HVAC system. Thanks friends. Next video, we will see, understand all about subcooling. Thank you all. Please like and comment the videos. Share my channel with your friends. Subscribe my channel for more updated videos. Thank you see you next video.